Hey, Kyle. Matt Mayoko here. How you doing? I'm doing good, Matt. How are you? Doing great, thanks. Well, the last time we talked to you, you seem to have, you know, the emotions kind of caught up to you. Um, looking back on that, did it surprise you that you were as emotional as you were? And also, you know, did the did the New York Jets, did they were they involved in this? Uh, kind of speak to that about just the, the emotions of returning to the 49ers. Yeah, uh, those emotions were definitely real. And I can't say that I'm surprised uh, just because I just feel so connected to this organization. And I feel like I'm such a part of it um, that when the realization and the, and the possibility of, of leaving here um, came on the table, it, 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 it definitely hit, hit home. It, you know, it pulled on my heartstrings and um, I knew it was, you know, something that I didn't necessarily want to do, but it was a possibility. Like I, I went into this free agency with an open mind and, and knowing that I really could end up anywhere. So, um, yeah, it was all real. And, uh, I'm, I'm not totally surprised. Um, as far as the New York jets go, I, I mean, you know, we, I signed before free agency started, so I didn't really talk to anybody. So, <laughs> so I can't really, uh, you know, speak too much on that. I, I just know that, um, you know, I'm happy to land up where I did. Sorry, one more Jets related question. I know that you didn't really talk to anybody, but you, you know that um, obviously where they operate out of in, in New Jersey. And I know that your um, your wife's family is from Long Island and you guys have a house out there. I mean, did, did the proximity was was that sort of a, a pull that that you had to sort of contemplate that this would be, um, you know, uh, a good spot for my family uh, for the next four or five years? Yeah, it, it definitely was. I'll be honest. Um, but it, it wasn't just the Jets. It's, it really was the whole East Coast and just anything closer to family. Um, you know, my side of the family is from Cleveland. Uh, my wife's side is from Long Island. And so just anything closer was just going to be easier. But, um, you know, I've, I've spoke openly that that wasn't the only factor into where I wanted to play. That was one of the few factors was location. Um, but familiar with familiarity with the system, um, comfortability, uh, being on a team that can contend, a team that's ready to win, um, and a team that uh, was going to give me a good offer and that, that I could play for the right amount of money that I wanted to. So um, the Niners didn't check the box of being on the East Coast, but they definitely, definitely checked the box of everywhere else. Kyle, I want to get to the, the hard-hitting journalism that needs to be done here. Uh, can you take us through the FaceTime call that you received <laughs> on, on Saturday night? And uh, please spare no details. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to spare a few details. But <laughs> uh, I got some FaceTime. I got, I got a, uh, a couple. I got First, I talked with Kyle and his wife, um, and they are just very congratulatory. You know, we didn't have the, the deal finished yet, but it was it was basically in place. We just had a few details that we had to um, wrap up, but you know, it, was, it wasn't anything that was gonna keep us from getting the deal done. Um, so we, we celebrated a little early. Uh, they, they were very stoked, I was stoked. And then uh, I got a call from, from John and, and same thing. Uh, he was with everybody else. They was at, uh, at Jed York's 40th birthday party. So um, phone got passed around, a lot of congratulations, a lot of cheers and all those sort of things. Uh, but I guess I'll just kind of leave it at that. It was, it was all good, fun things. And um, it was it was honestly, it's so cool to um, to be a part of that and like to get FaceTimes from your from your owner and your GM and your head coach and and speak with their families and, and be comfortable like that, that. That's it's like I'm speaking with my own family. You know, I it's not one of those awkward conversations. That it's just yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to do great, sir. It's you know, it's just real conversations and real genuine joy and um, that's why I feel so connected to this this program. Hey, Kyle, it's Cam Inman here. What um, when you talk about the 49ers are ready to win, uh, you re-signed Trent Williams today. Uh, a couple other pieces have come into play, and obviously everybody's healthy enough this off season. Uh, how does this feel, kind of compared to I guess two years ago when you guys were getting ready for a Super Bowl run, um, and, and how legitimate is that? Yeah, woke up this morning feeling like Christmas, man. We got Trent Williams, and I don't know if it's official yet, but I'm hearing that Alex Mack is supposed to come in, and um, it feels awesome, man. And it, 
I do feel like we are, we are ready to win. Um, I feel like we are healthy. We have added players. We have kept players. Uh, we've gained experience over the past couple of years. And um, I think all arrows are trending up for us. Um, the difference from th this year and two years ago is two years ago, we hadn't really proved it yet. Uh, we all believed it. We had shown glimpses of it, um, but we hadn't really, you know, put it all together. And now I, I feel like we've done it. We've been through it. You know, we've won 13 games in a regular season. And so we know how that feels. We know it's possible. And uh, I mean, majority of those guys are going to be here um, to try and do it again. And we got some, uh, you know, good, fresh new faces uh, for the guys that aren't here to, to step in. So, um, yeah, I, I just feel like we're in, in great position to uh, return to where we were at two years ago. Hey, Kyle, congratulations. And Thank what does you. it mean for the offense to have Trent Williams, you, and potentially Alex Mack back? Man, it, it means everything. Um, I think the, the con continuity of having the guys back that have played with each other. Um, and, you know, Alex has, has played in Kyle's system, so he's very familiar. And I played with him in the, in the Pro Bowl, and I know uh, just getting to know him, what an awesome guy he was, and also uh, just seeing kind of um, his football smarts and being able to talk to him and, um, you know, talk about Kyle and his offense and that kind of thing. Um, but I mean, those are all guys that, um, you know, like Trent, Trent's a game changer, man. He's, he's somebody that, um, teams have to scheme around. They have to change what they're doing because he's out there and he's a guy that, um, you know, we can just completely count on and know that he's going to get his job done. And then some, uh, and you know, there's no amount of money, uh, you can't pay too much for a guy like that. Uh, those are, those are guys that really make a difference and, and put you over the top and, and put you into that, that championship caliber and not just a, a good team, but a great team. Hey Kyle, who was the least sober member of the Jaguars birthday party? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't throw anybody under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have my suspicions. Um, and also, you know, I, you can't use the, uh, when, what he did to Jordan Hicks, I guess, in week one uh, last year. But, you know, when you say, you know, why is Trent Williams so good or such a, you know, just such a, a elite player? Is there a snap or a moment that comes to mind last year that said, wow, you know, that's just different. Not many people can do what he just did. I mean, definitely that play um, in Arizona. But honestly, it's it's just the his ability. And it's not just, you know, these highlight plays. It's just on regular plays when you see his ability to move another man. Like a lot of times I, I would say most people, when you're blocking somebody, it's pretty much a stalemate or maybe you're moving him back or foot or two. This guy's actually moving defense alignment, you know, into the laps of linebackers back into the secondary and that's just something that just doesn't really happen in the NFL. You know, you see crazy highlights of that of high school kids or college players, but we're all professionals. And for him to be able to just manhandle people like that, um, it's just it's just something so special and and something you're not going to see anywhere else. Hey, Kyle, I know you listed off the reasons um, why you wanted to come back, but what, why did you not, uh, why, why'd you do it early before the start of the, uh, the negotiating window? And I guess that would signal that you just really wanted to come back, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know what, I, I had a number in mind of if we could just reach that number, if, if San Francisco could reach that number, I would be happy and I would, um, and I would, I want to come back and not even delay the process, you know? Um, I, I was, you know, somewhat interested in, in seeing what my number would be out there on the market. Um, but at the end of the day, I found a number that I was happy with, comfortable with. And um, honestly, there's, there's just no there's no better fit in the league for me than in San Francisco. Um, just to be completely honest, you know, Kyle is just the, the perfect he puts together the perfect system for me to play in uh, and for me to go anywhere else and, um, you know, have to uproot my life really, you know, um, you know, sell my house in California, find a new spot, find, you know, have all new teammates, uh, begin the whole process over again. Um, this late in my career, uh, you know, there was a certain part of me that didn't really want to do that. And so if I could get that number I was happy with in San Francisco, 
uh, I was just going to roll with it and just continue um, in a place that I'm so happy to be in. Hey, Kyle, I guess extending on that, I noticed in one of the videos that you posted, Mike McDaniel FaceTimed you, <laughs> congratulated you. How uh, big of an influence uh, is your relationship uh, with him on the fact that you're so comfortable with the 49ers offense? And what do you see uh, as far as his role? I know he got promoted this year. So do you think that's going to have any positive effects on uh, how things are called and, and how you're integrated? Yeah, big, big time. I'm, I'm so happy for Mike uh, and his promotion to OC. Uh, he absolutely deserves it. Uh, I don't think there's anybody um, better suited uh, for that role, uh, especially um, working for Kyle specifically. I, I feel like those two, um, those two are just like one mind. They really do think so similarly and are able to uh, complement each other so well. And um, my relationship with Mike had a huge, huge influence on me coming back. Um, because I'm, I'm extremely comfortable with them. I mean, the guy, he was at my wedding, um, you know, I saw my wife post a FaceTime with them. I mean, that's a regular thing, him and I FaceTiming in uh, off season and in season. So I just feel, uh, you know, he's a guy that I can talk to at any time and someone that I just have so, so much respect for uh, and just the way he carries himself and, um, you know, the, the tremendous job that he does and putting together a game plan every week. And, I'm, I'm definitely hopeful that uh, having my guy more involved in the passing game might get a, you know, a few more looks my way. So uh, that'll be something we'll see in the fall. Hey, Kyle, with, with everything that went on this last year with COVID and, and all the changes in the tough season you had, do you find that this off season you're even more itching to get back on the football field? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely say so. Um, just because, uh, you know, like you said, the, the way the season went and how it ended, it just, uh, it just, you know, had a, left a bad taste in your mouth. And it's something that um, the only way to get rid of that taste is to get back on the field and start playing. Uh, so that's definitely something uh, that has been driving me already. You know, when I'm in the, uh, the weight room or on the field running right now is man, I just, I already have that itch. It, honestly, as soon as the season ended, I had that itch. I wanted to uh, start working out and just get right to it. So um you know, hopefully don't want to wish my summer away, but uh, hopefully it goes quick and we, you know, we're back on the field and playing soon. Kyle, so how do you go about recruiting guys right now that maybe want to come in on a one year prove it deal? And it's not like you can necessarily go wine and dine these guys. Are you sending charcuterie yeah. boards or, or just <laughs> FaceTime them? What are you doing? Um, I, I've made some phone calls. I've shot out some texts and you know, I, I try to keep it casual, not be overbearing, try to work my way in there, uh, tell them I'm happy with whatever happens. But just so you know, if you were here, uh, you could be that final piece that, you know, puts us over the top. So definitely sent out a few of those. Um, I don't think it was my text to Trent Williams that got him to sign. <laughs> I think it might have been the 186 million, but uh, I'm going to tell myself that the few text messages that we had might have been uh, the icing on the cake and what got him to finally make his decision. Hey, Kyle, this is uh, Jason Dumas from Crown Four. Uh, you just mentioned like, when you, you know, kind of casually recruiting people and just that, you know, you mentioned we have a lot of pieces, we can, we can really uh, make some noise. Um, my question is, you know, Amongst your teammates, there's still so many pieces from that core group that, you know, made the Super Bowl wrong. And obviously you guys look forward, not backwards, but is, are those still conversations among you guys that you are preparing for a season? Like, hey, we still have what it takes. Like, we have the group that can get back there. Let's go out and do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I, I speak with, with Kittle regularly um, just about how we've got what it takes. And um, yeah, adding a few pieces and everything is no doubt going to help. Um, but even if we don't, we feel like we do have a, a staff ready or a, um, a squad ready to go uh, that when healthy is ready to win a championship. We'll do these last three for Juice. Hey Kyle, you know, we were all talking so much about the cap getting crunched and, and just that sort of worry um, and it looked pretty tight for a while. And then all of a sudden the 49ers seem to really create space in a second. How aware of you or how aware of all that stuff were you? And then how much anxiety did you have? And then how quickly did that all progress? 
Yeah, I was de- I was super aware of it. I was I was making phone calls to NFL PA guys every day. And when when we gonna have this cap number set? Uh, just because I knew as a free agent, that's gonna that's gonna affect me directly and how much cash these teams have and are able to uh, and spent to spend in free agency. And um, no less than myself that uh, you know a guy that um, you know not a lot of people are employing a fullback. So uh, if they are going to, they uh, better have the money to, you know, to spend on it. Cause some people look at it as a luxury. Um, and, I, and I'm happy that San Francisco doesn't look at it that way. They look at it as more of a priority and that means a lot to me. Um, but yeah, like I said, super aware of it. Uh, it's crazy what uh, teams have been able to do to manipulate the cap. Uh, there's been some serious cap magic going on out there. Um, but you know, I, I know I can speak for our organization that, um, Prague has been phenomenal in doing what he's been doing. And, uh, he was great to work with on, on my end, and I'm happy that we've been able to sign as many guys as we have already uh, with what looked like a uh, you know limited amount of funds. Kyle, first of all, congrats on the new deal, and you were definitely the reason that Trent signed and not the $55 million guaranteed. Um, I know it. I know it. <laughs> there's, been, there's been a lot of talk in the analytical world about just the importance of running the football, and I think the 49ers paying you speaks to how Kyle feels about that statement. But for an offense, I want to know how important is it for you guys to set the tone on the ground and how does an effective ground game wear on a defense as the game goes along? Yeah, I think there's no question that uh, in order to win a championship, you got to be able to run the football. Uh, and I think you saw it with Tampa Bay and how they dominated in, in the, the postseason by running the ball. And I think you can also go back to us um, when, when we were doing so well two years ago, I, Without a doubt, we are a running football team. I think, you know, in the playoffs, we, we won a game uh, by throwing the ball only eight times the entire time. Um, but I just, you know, speak from, from me personally, uh, when you're running the ball successfully in a football game, there's nothing like it to boost your, your motivation, your confidence. Uh, when you're just manhandling a defense, uh, it's crazy that, you know, like an eight-yard run, but that you really just, you just ran over top of them gives you more um, uh, momentum sometimes than hitting like a 20 yard pass. You know, there's just something about the physicality of it. And uh, I think that just goes back to the roots of football. That It's just a, it's such a physical game. And when you're winning physically and it's, it's not always just outsmarting somebody or outrunning somebody, but physically dominating them, uh, it just moves the momentum uh, in your favor. And uh, you know, it just, it really is, I think the key to winning championships. Do our last one with Chris. Hey, Kyle, I have a, a vaccine question. Um, it seems like it's going to be kind of a, an interesting issue over these next few months with, with the NFL. I'm curious um, if you would support the league making the vaccine mandatory for players and how do you think uh, the NFL PA uh, and I guess just players as a whole would react to something like that? Yeah, Chris, you know what? I, I haven't, put a ton of thought into that. I, it has crossed my mind um, whether or not the NFL would require us to do so. Um, and it's honestly, it's something that, that I'm open to. If, if that's something that everyone needs to feel comfortable to be on the field, um, then by all means, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be one of the guys opting out. Uh, but as far as, um, you know, whether, you know, if I, if I support it or if I, um, or if we've heard anything about it, I honestly, I don't know too much and we haven't really heard anything about it. So um, it's kind of a mystery to me, but if that's something that we need to do to get on the field, then uh, let's go ahead and do it. Hey, Faithful, don't forget to click here and subscribe.